Hey, everybody. Happy Sunday. I got something interesting to tell you. And don't think ever that we're too old to learn or we know it all. Because something happened to me last night that I need to tell you about. And I went on and on after this meeting yesterday. And it hasn't been posted. So I'm going to paraphrase and let you know the beginning and the end. So I was invited to sit with someone at uh, my, my team member, Ernie, his wife, Lou, and go and meet our local MLA, Lauren Dirksen. This is him right here. That's from the BC United Caucus. So I was invited to go there. So I asked him, how long have you been in politics? Oh, I've only been in politics three years, he said, and I went in to help the people, and I've been helping the people. And he went on to say how he'd been to uh, Westwold to help the farmers there about their dilemma with the water. And I said, oh, that's good, because I reached out to them with the stuff that I've learned about corporations and all that, and I... I tracked down one of those farmers and I said to him, hey, this is who I am and I'm in Williams Lake and I've learned something. Did you realize your community was a corporation? And he said, yeah. And I said, okay, did you know that British Columbia and Canada and all the provinces and territories were corporations too? And he just couldn't go there. He said, well, well I, I know. He said, I'm dealing with uh, my local representatives and and we're working on this. And, I, and he wouldn't talk to me anymore. And I, pardon me, and I felt really sad about that because I had information I could share. And, and I didn't know this at the time when I had watched the water, water videos, the three water videos, and I saw those enforcement officers and all that. And I really felt for those farmers because I was a farmer. So I was talking to Lauren Dirksen about it. And I said that I'd reached out to them and stuff. And then he goes, oh, yeah, but I've done this too. And I, uh, I've i got a, a beekeeper out west somewhere. And he's, you know, he's, they're telling him what he's got to do and this and that. And I, I decollate, he said. Lauren Dirksen said to me, yep, I'm helping people in decollate. Because in decollate, they're trying to take their fire hall. And I went to a lawyer and he even said that that land was given to those people for their fire hall. And I'm going to use words that we all know, like people, okay? And not always men and women, because they stole that, and that pisses me off. So he had gone to see the people there, and he was going to help them and all this stuff. And we had a conversation about how he was, he felt so powerless in there, and he didn't know what to do, and all that other kind of jazz. And he seemed to be very concerned about uh, our local, uh, one of our local city councillors, Moses, and how if he stepped out of that viper's den, that, that Moses would just come in there. And I said, let him have it. Let him go in there. You, you're talking like an honorable man, Lord Dirksen. And we need honorable men that are fighting for the people. And he showed a, he had his phone and he showed a picture of, of an old guy, just skin and bones, looked like Auschwitz. And he was way up in the bed, the hospital type bed, and his legs were just bones dangling over. And he, Lauren Dirksen says, yeah, and he, here's, I'm trying to help this guy in the hospital. And he's trying to keep out of his shite. Nobody's helping them and this and that. And I said, well, you know, our local mayor has control over all that. He can fix the hospital thing because that's his jurisdiction. And he can fix the school problem there. Nobody's going to tell someone, someone else's son or daughter that they have to be a boy or a girl if they've gone down that road and they're all mixed up. They can have a bathroom for that. But the boys can have a bathroom and the girls can have a bathroom of their own, for those that know their boys and girls. And the mayor can do that, I told him. And the mayor handles the police and the courts and all these things. And I was telling them all this, everything I tell you guys. 
Oh, but he kept going back to taxation. Oh, but you know, how are we going to fix stuff without taxation? And I said, look, Lauren Dirksen, nobody is says that they don't want to pay into something. But our government gave $9 billion to Ukraine, amongst other monies. But at that time, I was teaching my grandson, and I said to him, well, let's just figure out how much money that is. Now, I don't have the numbers in front of me, obviously, but I can generally tell you what it, we figured it out at. You got Ukraine is this big in the world, and Canada is like huge compared to Ukraine, okay? Canada's got about 35 million people or such, or 38 or whatever it is, something like that. And Ukraine is about the same, so they're about the same. So my grandson and I took the $9 billion, we divided it in, in the, into the 35 million people in Canada, and we figured out that if we spent $1,000 a month to every man, woman, and child in Canada from the time they were born until they turned 80 years old, they would each have $1,000 a month. And that, it, that still only took half of the $9 billion. So I said to him, okay, then that would mean that that would do the same for every man, woman, and child in Ukraine. So I told this to Lauren Dirksen. I said, there's got to be money there somewhere. And he kept going back to that. And what do you want me to do? Stand on a soapbox and cry to the people. And I said, well, obviously enough people trusted you. They voted you in. So obviously then, you have a certain amount of people, and I'm sure they would come and listen to you on a soapbox. You got their emails, or you can, you know, you have the ability to put a notice somewhere. It's coming in the summertime. You can stand on the cenotaph across from your office or in a parking lot, or, you know, I mean, you're a leader, right? So I said, uh, if I can go in the library with the 30 people, I'm sure that you can figure out who to, you know, where to go and stand on your soapbox and I'll stand there beside you. And so will, will uh, Ernie and Lou. And then we'll tell you, be honest with the people I told them. You tell the people that you found something out in the three years you were there and that you discovered that it was a den of vipers and that your voice meant nothing and that you're sorry that you that you couldn't do anything for them and all that, that you've stepped out of that and that you want the men and women to support you because you're going to try and make a difference here in your own community like you have all along. And he kept going back again to taxation. And I said, look, Lauren, you've got a corporation called British Columbia. It has no jurisdiction to the land. It's just a corporation, no different than Walmart. And, uh, and, I, and I told them about the BNA Act. I walked them through that like I do everybody else. They have no jurisdiction. They're just a bunch of pirates, criminals. But they're all dressed slick. They don't dress scary. They don't have swashbuckling and patches and parrots on their shoulders and stuff like that. So I told them that. And I said, you can't tell me there's not enough money. When, when these corporations that have no jurisdiction are stealing our lumber here in the Caribou, and they're stealing diamonds in the diamond mines of Northwest Territories, and fish, and, and, and on it goes. And I was getting pretty animated, I got to say. Ernie put his hand on my shoulder there, and he said, uh, you need a break? And I said, no, I'm on a roll. You guys know me, I'm on a roll. So anyway, when it came to the end of that, and he was talking about how much he cared, and he's got a nine-year-old mom, and this and that, and he knows all about the, the jabs and all how they're terrible they are, and why, oh, I, he can't understand why nobody's talking about it. And I said, yeah, it killed my sister, separated me from my friends. My friends are dead or dying. I'm pissed off about that, Lord. He says, yeah, he said, I know people that died too. And so I, so he had me hook, line, and sinker. I'm here to tell you, I believed him because I wanted to believe that there was someone 
that went into some type of leadership role that had enough people in, in my district that supported him, that if we got him on the right side, none of that den of vipers with their glossa, viperinus, right? That Edward taught me about, but their, their poisonous language, that we would have a hope. So I came back and I was a little defeated. I saw the 15 minute polls up. I watched on my, my uh, speedometer and I seen her altimeter. I forget what, you know, that DVD tells you how many miles you go. And, uh, and I looked and sure enough, 15 minutes, well, that was my clock. <laughs> it was my clock. I was looking at my clock and 15 minutes uh, out of my district was when those street lights ended, those LED lights. And I thought, oh my, they got this in place already. And I came home and I was tired because this is a lot of mental stuff. And when I say something that's true and I know it's true or I don't say anything, I, you know, I don't even, even tell my dog to shut up unless I intended on going out there at 20 below and dragging its butt into the house. So I'm careful what I say. So when I got home, I was pretty pretty tired. I've been working really hard every single day. I haven't even eaten yet. My sandwich is drying out right here. Had a hard time getting this started. And I talk a lot. We all know that. So I was feeling a little defeated and I sat here and I thought, no, I'm not going to come on the Zoom or anything. And and then I uh, remembered Lauren said that he had done FOI requests for the people because I'm letting this going on in my head well, how, how that went. And then I realized if he'd done FOI requests and he said they never got a response, well, then that's a tacit agreement. They're not disagreeing. So I thought, hey, I'm going to call him and email him. I didn't have his number. I'm going to email him and I'm going to thank him for the conversation. It was like better part or of three hours, maybe a little more. And I'm going to tell him to stand strong and that he will have support and I will be there to support him and I will help. So I came on the Zoom and spouted off and all that. And then I went to bed. And in the morning I went, because I had spoken to him three years ago about my Canada pension. And I reminded him of that when I went in. And so uh, it was to do with my disability pension for my brain tumor and, and the Canada pension being taken off me. Still want you to stay in poverty. So the, the email I had from, for him was old. It had him on as a liberal, which was interesting in itself. I'd forgotten about that. So I Googled Lauren Dirksen. And it came up on the internet and it said... Uh, BC United Caucus. Well, I didn't even know there was such a thing because I don't vote because it's the lesser of all the criminals. I can't, you know, I have no confidence in any of these buggers. So I clicked on his name and his picture came up. Nice, fair looking guy. And I was feeling pretty good. I thought, oh, there's an honest man if I ever saw one. Talk about being naive. So I'm going to read you what this said, my great revelation to this because I when I found this out and my phone wasn't working today and my computer wasn't working today I pick up the phone and it was all scratchy and I don't know all sorts of untoward stuff was going on so I when it did work I phoned uh I phoned constitutional conventions and I said I want to have another zoom ASAP I said because I've told people something that's not right I said that this man, that this Lauren Dirksen, that I, I didn't say who he was at the time because I was being discreet on his behalf because I wanted him on our side, okay? And now I know he's a traitor, and so I'm telling you who he is because he's got people in West Wales and out West, and he's got no, people no, no. believing that he's there to help them. That he's there to help. And he's just there to bamboozle them. There to bamboozle them. Someone's got to shut their thing off. We're getting echoes here. So 
so I got the first page. First page came up, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, Lauren Dirksen, Caribou Chilcotin, Shadow Minister. That's the first two words, Shadow Minister. For Emergency Management and Climate Readiness and Water, comma, Land and Resource Stewardship. And I thought, what is a shadow minister? At first, I stopped right there because I don't know what the meanings of stuff are, stuff is. So I Googled that. And it says, a shadow ministers are members of the opposition chosen by the leader of the opposition. They're responsible for scrutinizing the work of the government and individual ministers. Okay? So they're the ones that in the theater that we all know is these legislatures and these corporations that they got to have some, they got to have this big argument going on about all the acts and statutes and all that. So he's just the mouthpiece for the opposition. So I thought, okay, but what a worthy shadow minister. Shadow it is. So it said here, Lauren Dirksen was first elected as MLA for Caribou Chilcotin in 2020. So I'm still pretty huffed up. I didn't like the shadow minister wording, but I thought, okay, that's true then. That's three years. So he's been in for three years. He currently serves as shadow minister for emergency management, which is a scary thing. We all know that. And climate readiness, water, land, and resource stewardship and caucus chair. Well, I know if you are a chair of something, you're kind of high up there, as far as I know. I never Googled that. But by the time I got to the end, I was too pissed off. Dirksen had previously served as deputy whip and shadow minister for water, land, and resource stewardship and rural development. That's the Decca Lake people. They have a rural fire department and the British Columbia Corporation is using thuggery to try and take away their fire department. It goes on to say, a longtime resident of the Caribou Chilcotin. Lauren Dirksen has worked in many different industries. He spent 20 years in the newspaper business. Well, we know that the media is the virus. Well, then I'm thinking, okay, didn't realize that until the end, but okay. Followed by a stint in the automobile industry. Well, apparently from what uh, Ernie just told me, I was on, but I wasn't on because Ernie phoned me. I said, you contact me right away. He was a salesman. Hmm. That's another strike. And self-employment in financial services. He told me he'd only been in the in politics for for three years and that he had a glazier business with glass. And I use that as an example about, you know, corporations and contracts and, you know, if you sell someone a window and it fogs up in the winter. Well, you know, you got to deal with it. I was trying to explain contracts and I figured he'd understand that. So let go on, it went on to say Lauren Dirksen is a passionate community booster and was twice awarded the Community Booster Award by the Chamber of Commerce. He served on many boards and volunteered for a variety of local causes. He's a rotary. He told me that. He's often performed MC duties for events and served at an executive level on boards, including the Williams Lake Stampede, the Chamber of Commerce, which business people that have come to my meetings have said they don't do anything but but take their money and then plan on how to do a street party at Stampede. They don't discuss anything to help them with taxation or anything else, and they wouldn't talk to me when I wanted to, to contact them about this truth that I discovered on behalf of my small businesses. Well, who would you go to? You'd go to your small business chamber. And they gave me, oh, no, no, we don't discuss that kind of stuff, politics and such. So he's involved in the BC Community Newspaper Association, right? More uh, propaganda. And the Huff Memorial Cancer Society. He brought up all this cancer everybody has. Okay, he brought that up. Well, I know from a scientist friend of mine 
that they've had the cure for cancer for a long time, but they can't make any money off it. And that came from a scientist at the highest level, by the way. It also said at the very end, and this is what blew me off my seat, made me mad as hell. Lauren Dirksen has always had a passion for politics, has served as the BC United Party at the executive level for many years. Well, many years, why didn't they just say three years or since 2020? So he lied and had that video gone out, had that video not been scrutinized by constitutional convention and picked that up, I would have been telling you all a big lie. And that's how smooth and slick these pirates are. And that's how, how, uh, and I mentioned to him about how I had a dream that a criminal, one of these criminals came to me and said, oh, Darcy, I'd really like you to be quiet. What would it cost? And I looked them straight in the eyes like I am to you. And I said, what would it cost for you to sell out your grandchildren and their children in the future? And I told him that. And as I was in this meeting, because I looked people in the face, it doesn't matter if they had masks on during the, during the pandemic. I looked in people's eyes and I knew who they were. And I never wore a mask. And I'd say, oh, hi, Fred. Hi, John. Hi, Larry. Hi, Susie. How do you know it's me? I said, well, I can see your eyes. And I was watching his eyes. And there was times when I looked in his eyes and he knew I knew. And there was times I looked in his eyes and I could see the flicker of deceit going around the back, but I was too much in hopium. Brothers and sisters, I was. I really thought that, it, uh, that I had someone that would be on board to help us. If we could just get one stand up. And I even told him that there was that there was uh, leaders, you know, uh, counselors and directors and mayors and stuff that are sitting there and, and are being threatened and stuff. That it's not an easy role. And that's why in my letters to the mayor, and that was what I was going to send him this morning, that I was going to tell them. So he could read that letter. Did you know when you went into office that, that you were this was happening to you? Did you have time to read all the documents that you had to sign? Were you aware that you could be in three jurisdictions, public, right? GO office, government office of the people. Or were you a non-government office, NGO, which meant you took your directives from the corporation of whatever province, in our case, British Columbia and Canada. And I've seen it on the oath by my regional district in Kamloops. I've seen the oath, and they're exactly the same. Ours is simple with the regional district, and Kamloops has a big old crest, and I could have a conversation on that in itself. So they're at least an NGO, right? Because they answer to the province. But we know since 1992, when CEO Mulrooney, for the Corporation of Canada signed us all to uh, the Rio Summit, the United Nations Agenda 21, and the and the UN Sustainable Development Goal, the Rainbow Circle, and all the 17 things in there. That we and we see it on our buildings. We all got rainbow sidewalks, even up there in Hudson Hope. That we have been, we are under foreign occupation. Okay, so this wolf that's trying to, to tell the people of West Wolf and Deca Lake and those people out there in the caribou with their bee farms and everything else, he's lying because he could have said to you at that time, he told me he did FOI requests and that they came back and he got nowhere. Well, that means that they can't deny it. But did he tell those people that, his constituents that? No, no. 
he just played the game. Like he tried and all oh, will be gone. Poor, I'm working my language real hard here, Ed. He played them for fools. And he could have just as easily been the man that he tried to tell me he was. And he could have said to them, well, you know, they're corporations and they have to have a contract with you. So here I am right now, pissed off because I fell for it. But don't you fall for it. This is Lauren Dirksen, Caribou Chill Coton, Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. And if you got a problem and he's told you he was going to fix it, you get hold of pissed off grandma. And I'll do some papers up for you and I'll figure you out. And it won't be record time and I don't need a FOI request because he's already done it. And I will help you have your fire hall and deck the lake and your bee farm or whatever it is. And I'll help you in Westwold if you'll just trust me. So that's my rant for today. And I'm thankful that Constitutional Convention never posted that. Because you'd have been listening to me going on and on and on. And, uh, and, it, and I was being taken for a ride. Well, let's not be taken for a ride. Let's go where we know people are telling the truth and they, they edit to make sure that you're not getting anything but the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God, creator, whatever you believe. Because these guys are all the same. Car salesmen, newspapermen, slicker than the... Now I'm watching it again. I'm trying to think of a good analogy. Goose shit. That's pretty slick. I got a lot of geese at my place. So just hang in there. Talk to each other. Get together. Seek me out. I'm here by myself. My grandson's not at grandma's residential school anymore. I got him up to grade five. He big boys up. He's homeschooling now. And he knows he's a boy. But we're not going to forget those LGBXYZs either and those poor kids that have been buggered up from this lies and deceit and the chemicals in the air and in the food and everything else. A society that has any worthiness for mankind is one that takes care of those that have been injured and hurt. And that's just what us grandmas do because we gave life. Okay? So... Thanks for listening. I know I'm always long, but I hope, I'm glad you were there for it. And uh, just keep reaching out and don't believe any of these traitors because there is not one of them that's got your best interest. The harder they wouldn't be there. Okay? Peace out.